All right, check this out. Got the 24 volt solar generator inside. And remember, those are AGM batteries in there. They're sealed, so relatively safe to use inside. And right now, I just got an extension cord going into the hi fi, subwoofer, EQ, clock, and TV. All this combined, this right here uses about 270 watts continuous. Check this out. All right, now we're on this side. I've got the kilowatt meter hooked up to the extension cord. Let's take a look. Show you how many watts I got going here. About 265, 266. How many amps is that? 2.3-ish. Okay, cool. One good thing about this solar generator is that I can hook up the 24-volt battery tender when I'm not using it into the outlet here and this is on my solar circuit real easy and on this side I had to redo the grounding cable and we'll go outside here in a second I'll show you but I made a number this is a number four Temco welding cable I just made a, another end on there for good grounds and I'll show you what I did for grounds all right let's take a look inside and I'll show you how much power I'm making Right now, sitting about eh, 292, it goes up to about 325 in good sun, and I've got great sun right now. So remember, the stereo and TV is consuming about 270 watts. So this is uh, just keeping up, barely. You can't do any charging while you're using the, the, the amount of power that you're making. So. I'll tell you what I'm going to do next on that. Let's look over here. As you can see, I've got the utility cord. This is 12-3 cable. And I've got the uh, solar panels hooked into the connector there. Now, when I don't want to use the solar generator, I unplug here and plug in here. Real simple. Had to punch a hole right here for the solar cable and the grounding cable. Safety first, always do grounds. Now down here with the ground, right next to the porch, this is probably one of the wettest areas of the house. It's a very low spot right here. So I had about a four foot section of grounding rod and banged it down. And yeah, you know, eight foot is ideal. But I tell you, if I don't have good grounds at four feet in this wet of soil, I'd be very, very surprised. And the other end of the grounding cable is connected with a grounding rod clamp right there. Works real good. Went in pretty well. This is going to be a semi-temporary setup here, and I made it so I can expand it for two more solar panels. This is 400 watt solar panels, the Renji RNG 100D mono panels. The exact same ones I have on the main array right there. And these of course are the ones that fold up and I can take and put in the back of the truck and go tailgating, camping, you know, just about a billion uses you can use a portable solar generator for. But let's walk up here, or I'll just go up there real close and I'll show you some of the details. I had some spare uni struts, so I just made a little lean-to stand thing here, banged them down about a foot or so. And the cable that I had made, and you've probably seen in the other videos, is that 12-tooth landscaping cable. But I had to put some extensions on here so it fit right here in this area, which gets maximum amount of sun. We get about a good, I don't know, five hours this time of year, six hours maybe. But um, making power, you know, like you saw in there, about 300 watts or so. So let's go over here and take a look. Just bolted these dogs in right there with grade 8 bolts. And then on the back side here, I got the fuse right there. Inline fuse, MC4. Just bolted these together, these two pieces of small uni strut, 
and I could extend those to get a longer um, base or whatever you want to call it, lean to for more solar panels. A couple more solar panels I think would be ideal for this small solar generator. But, uh, and I got them beetle wrapped in here so I can quick disconnect instead of using regular zip strip tie straps and I use this <clears throat> excuse me funky stuff I don't know what you call this but uh, works real good just keep them from flopping around too much it's not you know tornado proof or anything like that this is just to keep them from blowing down and cats bun bumping into them or, or whatever but uh, yeah works good pretty happy with it might as well put that thing to use, huh? This is just another angle to show you the stand. And for all my new viewers, this is my 1200 watt array. Renogy RNG 100D solar panels there. And that works great. Catches a lot of sun. And also this is on the pergola I did last spring. This is 1,305 watts of panels right here. 435 a piece. Got those in parallel. Those are high voltage panels. Beasts. Beasts. Laminates. Frameless. And of course cocoa. The mighty hunter checking out that bird up there on the fence. <laughs> Crazy. I know this thing isn't probably the most attractive item to have for your living room, but I think it looks good. And might as well use it instead of having it sit out in the cold garage and those four solar panels sitting there, you know, not doing anything. You gotta put those solar panels to work. So I got, like I said earlier, I got 300 watts coming in. I'm using about 270. Not much charging going on for about four or five hours. That's one of the things that you have to keep in mind when you have something like this or any, you know, off-grid do-it-yourself system is that if you want, say you get 400 watts in panels and you have 400 watts continuous and yeah, you can do it, but uh, you're not going to charge your batteries. And right now with 270 watts continuous, and I'm, my panels are making about 300, which is about 75% of the rated power, which isn't bad, but uh, you're not going to be charging very much. Now, I haven't done a load test, you know, overnight type thing with this. Uh, I'm sure it'll be fine, but uh, I just want to get this thing in use. And yes, I can use up to 1,500 watts, 2,000 watt surge. So I, yeah, I can make coffee, I can run a refrigerator, I can do all kinds of stuff with this. Especially for short bursts. So, I just want to get this thing in use. Alright, I'm going to wrap this up. Thanks for watching guys, and we'll see you next time.